Good morning, I'm Ben Pearson, former Channel 5 Police Interceptor. And today we are doing videos on facts and fiction of the police officers. People think that we don't do anything or we do do some things and this is going to debunk it all. So we hope you like the video and let's roll. Oof. Sometimes. Um, it depends what role you're in. If you're in traffic, firearms and dogs, more or less, yeah, uh, every day is fast pursuits. Uh, wrestling burglars, doing stuff like you see on TV. Um, and it's a bit like one of those jobs where you'd think, yeah, I really want to do this. If you're on other roles, such as neighbor policing, CID, um, I just try to think what other things are. It's not so much like that. It's steady where it's um, you're coming into the office, you, you're doing some paperwork first, and then you might go out and do some arrests and do some warrant inquiries. So it's not like that on certain roles, but in the action jobs that you want to do, traffic and firearms, it is like police interceptors every day. Yes, we do. We uh, And this isn't we go to donut shops and pull outside donut shops like Aunt Simpsons and stuff like that. But we do eat a lot of donuts because we have um, officers that are new in the force come for attachments with us. They will often bring cakes in. If it's someone's birthday, they'll bring cakes or buns in. And one of the easy things to pick up are donuts. So we do eat a lot of donuts, especially the, the red top ones, which I won't go into what they're called again because we've, <laughs> we've done that. So yes, we eat a lot of donuts, we eat a lot of cakes, and that's why there are a lot of fat police officers. I shouldn't say that, should I? There's a lot of officers that sometimes are a little bit overweight, and I do apologise. <laughs> There's a lot of officers that are arrogant, and I'll put that down to the do. There are a lot of officers that wear a uniform and have a bit of a power trip. But do they think they're perfect? No, not in slightest, because there's so much to know. We get so much wrong, and we do. Uh, it's hard, it's hard coming in knowing all the law, all the human rights knowledge, all the what's going on today in the world in general. Um, the, the law changes literally every single day and rights change and force policy change every day. And if you haven't come in and read your emails there and then, uh, you might not know it uh, and other people will know it in front of you. So we don't think we're perfect and I never did, but there, there are some officers that walk around with their arms out like carrying carpets with fake tans on and other cells that want me. A fitness test is now a joke. The fitness test is now a joke. When I joined, it was very, very hard. And this isn't me saying, yeah, check me out, because I'm overweight now. But when I joined, it was, I think it was nine point something on the uh, on the bleep test. I think it was 40 press-ups or 50 press-ups in a minute. Um, it was 60 sit-ups or something in a minute. It was something on that. We had grip tests, we had jump tests. It was very, very hard to do. And when you did a press-up, you had to go down onto someone's fist and come back up. And now I think it's something like 4.5 or 5 on the bleep test. It's not even a, a run. I think it's changed. Uh, I don't think it should be. This is me personally, but I'm not a Bobby anymore. I don't think it should be that easy. Um, we had weeks and weeks and weeks doing... Um, fitness training in place. We had it where we were doing, um, we had weeks of handcuff training and it's just not like that anymore. And I think they should bring that up. And I've always said as well, I think they should allocate one day a week. They should do a shift structure where they allocate one day a week um, to self-defense training and fitness training in the police. And your hours should be regulated. So if you rather than finishing at 10 at night, you should finish at eight at night and you get two hours to go to the gym. Uh, to keep you fit and it should be part of the false policy to keep you fit and keep you strong. <laughs> we used to be have to be like over six foot as a, as a man to join the police force and I think it was something like five foot six as a lady. Um, that's all changed now so in theory you can be any height to join the police. Um, the only downside is if you're not classed as a big person is a lot of people think you're easy to intimidate and you don't you might not have a lot of presence there but all the people that i've worked with that are not as tall so to speak they've all been fantastic bobbies they've all had awesome presence at jobs and i've never seen anyone picked on because of the size or at jobs they're, they're just they're out there they do the job and uh yeah they're good bobbies I think, I think the age, the maximum age limit is 40 to join. Is it 57? 
Who would want to join police at 57? And I think the minimum age is 18. Now, when I joined, I joined with an 18-year-old called Adam. Um, again, it's down to what you know. It's down to your world experience and where you've been on holiday, who you sport to, how you've grown up, your relationship status, everything. But then when you're older, you become more mature. Um, and again, I don't think you shouldn't be able to join at 40. I think you should be able to join at 40. You, you, you've got a good world of knowledge. And, um, but yeah, most people that are coming through at the moment, I think they're in the, the middle 20s, early to mid 20s. Bollocks. No one on beat likes giving out fines. Be beat bobbies don't like giving out tickets. It's that simple. They, they, they shy away from it because they've got so much more to do. Uh, beat bobbies are completely and utterly run off the feet. They're firefighting jobs all the time. Now, traffic cops, we do like giving out tickets, but the reason being is that's our remit. We give out tickets for speeding, for number plates, tinted windows, because we're called traffic cops. We are there to enforce road traffic law. The amount of people that are killed by murders is one thing, but the other biggest um, contributor uh, to deaths is road traffic collisions, and they're there due to, due to vehicle faults, such as ball tyres, tinted windows, um, <clears throat> faults on cars, which are generally easy to fix, and that's why we give them out. We don't give them out willy-nilly. We give them out because you're breaking the law. Now, I've, got a, I've had a ticket. I've had two tickets. I had one... When I was about 17, I drove the wrong way down a one-way street and I didn't see the, the entrance signs to the street, so I took it on chin. I was breaking the law. And the other one was in America. I overtook a parked school bus. on the It was on the left-hand side. I were on the right-hand side. Um, and again, I got a big fine. But I took it on chin because I broke the law. We, If you, if you trusted as a driver on the UK roads, you wouldn't get a ticket. You'd be, But you can't be trusted. That's why you get tickets. People have stopped at 140 miles an hour and... Um, on 70 mile an hour limits, that's why you get given. If, if you if you behaved and you drove in accordance with road traffic law, you'd be fine. And I've been stopped twice and I'm 40, I think I'm 46. I'm 46, I've been driving since I was 17 and I've been stopped twice. So if you keep getting tickets, there's obviously a common denominator which isn't the officer and it's not the rule break and it's obviously the person who's getting the ticket. Oh, well, I, I, I can't answer that. I can't really answer that. I think there's two ways you can join now. Um, there used to be, I only have to have a degree. And the other way now, I think you can do some sort of scheme. Uh, I, but I'm not, I'm not sure on that, so I can't answer that. Next question. You can join with a criminal record as long as it's declared and it's not of a, of a certain offence. So such as you can't have anything. Um, if I've got this wrong, please write into the address shown underneath, PO Box number 284, um, I couldn't care less street. <laughs> um, but you can't, you wouldn't be able to join if it was something like theft or a dishonestly, or a dishonest crime and conviction. You couldn't join if it was anything like a sexual or anything like that. If you if you did something when you were a kid that wasn't, it were a criminal offence, but wasn't detrimental to you being a bobby, such as like, you might have smashed a window when you were a kid because you got drunk. Um, and then when you're joining at 35, you, does that make you going to be a bad bobby when you did something stupid as a kid? Uh, the idea being is, with the police, you have to declare everything. And what people do, they're looking go, oh, I'm not going to put that because that happened when I was 16. Or they won't know about that. But all these checks are made. Um, so you've got to be honest. You've just got to put down, yes, this is what happened. Uh, and then fill it in and saying, I were a child, I were easily led at the time, blah, 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 blah. And you put it in driving offences. Yeah, I've been caught, I've been given three points for going through a red light in 2006, blah, 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 blah. And you put them because they will do a check. And if you've not put something on there, that's it, you've been straight off. And one of the main things is, this is how bad it is. It used to say, please write in black ink. Well, that was one of the first things because you, you're having to follow an order. So when they got applications through in blue ink, they didn't even look at them, they just threw them in bin. And it was like, well, if you can't follow that order, what order are you going to follow when we say you need to go into a right situation? Yes and no. It's called KPIs, Key Performance Indicators. And it's not a quota um, as such, but they will deem you to not perform unless you've done certain things that month. 
So just say when I were on beat, I used to be locking up 20 to 25 per month. Um, and you think each one of them might have incur four hours, five hours paperwork on top of that. If I come in then and go, right, I've locked up one a month, they'll say, well, what else have you been doing? Have you just been going out in your police car and hiding? So they might say, per week, you've got to get 10 tickets, four seizures, four intelligence reports, four arrests and this sort of thing. That's the minimum standard. Because if you don't get that, you'd be pulled into an office and say, why aren't you doing your job? Because you can't tell me you can't get one ticket there. Um, and we're not doing it for monetary uh, purposes. We're doing it because it, it creates a trace of what we've done that month. But again, these tickets are not for Mrs. Miggins at 32 in a 30 zone. These are these are criminals you're going after because you want to make an impact. And I know there'll be people out there going, you might like rubbish, but bollocks. You do not have to have two bobbies in a, in a car to be able to have stopped. You, you, one bobby in a vehicle can stop you. One bobby can issue you a ticket and one bobby can prosecute you. You don't have to have two bobbies because this is what people are saying you need to have. So you don't have to have two bobbies to be able to stop you. It can be just one bobby and they can deal with you. They can arrest you and they can prosecute you on their own. Again, this is a, a bit of a fallacy. We have to contact what's called FSUP for supervision. FSUP's an independent person in an office at the other side of Wakefield. We shout up, we're behind a stolen car, we, we want a pursuit. They will then say, yes, pursuit is authorised, but they're saying now because pursuit is authorised, you pursue it under TPAC guidelines, tactical pursuit and containment, so you are responsible now for anything that goes on. All they do is they're sat in office, so if you get too stressed, start shouting that radio, or they think you're going to do something wrong, they can say, but that is not a sergeant. Um, that's normally a civilian who's trained up. And basically, it's just a certain set of eyes that overlook you, if that makes sense. They'll have video footage from helicopter, they have video footage from CCTV, and they're not in the car going 100 mile an hour in a 30 zone, so they can see things that you might not see. And just say, for instance, you're going down a main road, a bomber road, there's a group of kids crossing, they would shout then abort, abort, abort the pursuit because they can see something you don't. So it's not a sergeant. We don't have to have the sergeant's permission. We don't need to get involved with the sergeant. And when you're TPAT trained, you are the ground commander. You are in charge. We can pursue motorbikes. We can pursue motorbikes when we want. We can pursue motorbikes, quads, everything. And when they say you can't pursue if you don't have a helmet on, we can pursue if you don't have a helmet on. So let's just knock that on head straight away. We decide if it's beneficial for us or what the crime is. If it's, I'm not being funny, no insurance and you had no helmet on, we probably won't pursue you. But if you've just been involved in an armed robbery and stabbed someone, we would pursue you. Um, and yes, if we got to the point where we could knock you off, we'd knock you off even if you had no helmet on. We've got to risk whether it's justified, proportionate, and reasonable, I think that's the three things. And if it is, we can do it. If we get caught speeding, um, we get prosecuted ourselves. If we get caught by a gas or camera, we get prosecuted. If we park in a bus lane, we get prosecuted. If we park in a dangerous position, we get prosecuted. We have got nothing to do with the council. So if the council sees us and parking warrants and issue a ticket, it's not to do with the police, it's down to you as the driver. The only thing you can do is you can dump your car anywhere when you're dealing with an emergency. And as long as you've got your blue lights on, you dump your car, fine. But you go down a bus lane, you get a bus ticket. And it's not the police that pay it, it comes straight into your tray. And then we've we've gone through pursuits in different areas, and this is with blue lights on. And we've gone through Gatso cameras like in North Yorkshire, and we still get a, an NIP sent to us from North Yorkshire. But we justify it, say we're on a log, it's fine, it gets wrote off. If we can't, unfortunately you get points. You get prosecuted. No one's above the law. Not even me.